Americans are absolutely drowning in debt, and this is really the worst debt crisis in all of U.S. history. Michael Snyder reports, I truly wish that headline was an exaggeration. Unfortunately, for decades, Americans have been extremely irresponsible with their finances. As a result, credit card debt is at an all-time high. Auto loan debt is at an all-time high. Mortgage debt is at an all-time high. Corporate debt is at an all-time high. State and local governments all over the nation continue to get into absurd amounts of debt. And the federal government has piled up the single largest mountain of debt in the history of the world. Our whole society is absolutely drowning in debt at this stage, and the only way out is for the entire system to collapse. On Tuesday, we learned that the total amount of credit card debt in the U.S. has now reached a new record high of $1.08 trillion. Americans now owe $1.08 trillion on their credit cards, according to a new report on household debt from the Federal Reserve Bank of New York. Credit card balances spiked by $154 billion year over year, notching the largest increase since 1999, New York Fed found. Credit card balances appearing experienced a large jump in the third quarter, consistent with strong consumer spending and real GDP growth, said Dong Hu Li, New York Fed economic research advisor. Credit card debt has always been one of the most insidious forms of debt but now the banks are pushing credit card interest rates to unprecedented heights. The rise in credit card usage and debt is particularly concerning because interest rates are astronomically high right now. The average credit card annual percentage rate, or ARP, hit a new record of 20.72% last week, according to a bank rate database that goes back to 1985. The previous record was 19% in July of 1991. If people are carrying debt to compensate for steering price, steeper prices, they could end up paying more for items in the long run. For instance, if you owe $5,000 in debt, which the average American does, current APR levels will mean it would make take about 279 months, months and $8,124 in interest to pay off the debt making the minimum payments. It should be illegal to issue a credit card that has an interest rate higher than 20%. But banks are going to keep doing it because our politicians will not stop them. So don't fall into their trap. Other forms of debt are rapidly growing as well. Auto loan balances also contributed to the uptick climbing by $13 billion over the course of the third quarter to $1.6 trillion. Student loan debt, meanwhile, has increased by $30 billion, while mortgage balances jumped by $126 billion to $12.14 million. Uh, trillion. Overall, U.S. households are now more than $17 trillion in debt. I can't even begin to describe how foolish we have been. The only way to keep the party going is to borrow even more money, but thanks to higher interest rate rates, we are not going to be able to purchase as much. This is something that Kevin O'Leary pointed out in a recent interview. We're looking at a downsized America. I tell it like it is, O'Leary said on The Big Money Show. Three years ago, even 24 months ago, you get a mortgage at 4.5%. You're lucky to get one at 8 today. So that means the size of the house you're going to buy is 20 to 25 percent smaller. That's the downsize. You want to borrow for a car? Sorry, that's eight to nine percent. Used to be five. The O'Leary Ventures chairman added, so smaller, less expensive car. That's happening at the same time. He's right, but we can't, just can't help ourselves. And so we're going to continue to borrow more money. The same thing is true for our corporations. Today, corporate debt is at the highest level ever recorded, and state and local governments continue to borrow money as if tomorrow will never come. But the biggest offender of all the federal government is the federal government. The national debt is currently sitting at $33.6 trillion, and it is constantly going higher. And you can watch the national debt clock race upwards right here, 
and at the link. To me, that dead clock is actually a countdown to the financial destruction of America. Once upon a time, I warned the U.S. would be paying a trillion dollars in interest on the national debt by the year 2030. Well, guess what? We got there early. According to Bloomberg, we have been already crossed the, that ominous threshold. Estimated annualized interest payments on the U.S. government debt pile climbed to a trillion dollars at the last at the end of last month. Bloomberg analysis shows that projected amount has doubled in the past 19 months from the equivalent figure forecast around the time. The estimated interest expense is calculated using U.S. Treasury data, which state the government's monthly outstanding debt balances and the average interest it pays. Wow. As usual, things are even worse than many of us were originally projecting. Before I end this article, there's one more thing I wanted to mention. The glitch that affected the direct deposit of so many paychecks all over the nation has still not been resolved five days later. A number of customers still have not received their direct deposit paychecks following a human error, quote unquote, that damaged the plumbing of America's banking system. The deposit delays are linked to a problem that emerged on Friday with the automated clearinghouse AC, ACH payment system causing headaches for consumers and employers. The Federal Reserve encourages banks to work quickly to resolve issues for customers experiencing delays in receiving direct deposit payments as a result of operational issues at a private sector payment provider or a Fed spokesman told CNN in a statement. Would it really was it really a human error that caused this? If someone just hit a wrong button, you would think that would be relatively easy to fix. Keep a close eye on the banks. As I discussed in my new book entitled Chaos, the banks are the beating heart of our economy and enormous trouble is brewing. Without healthy banks, our entire system will go haywire very rapidly. We need to borrow money for just about every major purchase that we make, and it is the banks that make the vast majority of those loans. If the flow of credit starts to dry up, so will our standard of living. Unfortunately, a credit crunch has now begun, and that is going to have very serious implications for all of us. And this is by Michael Snyder. He says about the author, my name is Michael. My brand new book entitled Chaos is now available in paperback and for Kindle on Amazon. In addition to my new book, I've written seven, seven other books that are available on Amazon, including Seven Year Apocalypse, Lost Prophecies of Future America, The Beginning of the End, Living a Life That Really Matters, Commissions Earned. When you purchase any of these books, you help to support the work that I'm doing. And one way that you can really help is by sending copies as gifts to family and friends. Time is short and I need help getting these warnings into the hands for as many people as possible. I have also started a brand new Substack newsletter and I encourage you to, to subscribe so that you won't miss any of my articles. I've published thousands of articles on the Economic Collapse blog, End of the American Dream, The Most Important News, and the articles that I publish on those sites are republished on dozens of other prominent websites all over the globe. I always freely and happily allow others to republish my articles on their own websites, but I also ask that they include this about the author section with each article. The material contained in this article is for general information purposes only, and readers should consult licensed professionals before making any legal business, financial, or health decisions. I encourage you to follow me on social media, Facebook, and Twitter. And any way that you can share these articles with others is definitely a great help. These are such troubled times and people need hope. John 3.16 tells us about the hope that God has given us through Jesus Christ. For God so loved the world that he, had, that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. If you have not already done so, I strongly urge you to invite Jesus Christ to be your Lord and Savior today. And this is on the Economic Collapse blog by Michael Snyder. Please leave your comments and thank you for your support. Support my Patreon account. The daily posts are five videos daily and they are totally different from what I have on my YouTube channel. Thank you so much for your support and that you find all my content so interesting. You'll find the Patreon account details in the description box below.